Hey all, uh, so right now I'm going to be talking about RAS, the RAS signaling pathway. Uh, this is new material for us in year two of medical school, so bear with me. If I make any mistakes, please point them out. So to start off, we'll talk about what RAS is. So RAS um, is a, a protein that's attached to the membrane, so it's membrane bound. Uh, it's a membrane-bound protein that um, um, has GTP bound to it. So, membrane-bound protein with GTP attached. And this is the same as a G protein. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about this pathway a little bit now. So I'm gonna draw a line here. Think of this as our cell membrane. This is gonna be the extracellular part. This is the intracellular part. So in our cell membrane, we have this guy here, um, which is a tyrosine kinase receptor. So as you can see, I drew two lines that are the same thing. It's a homodimer. It has an, int uh, an intracellular part and an extracellular part. So um, this tyrosine kinase receptor is going to bind growth factor or growth factors um, extracellularly. When it binds extracellular growth factors, it gets activated and phosph uh, which is like uh, phosphorylation for tyrosine kinase. So after it gets phosphorylated, it's going to bind to RAS, but it doesn't bind to RAS directly. So RAS, we said, was an intracellular, uh, sorry, a membrane attached G protein, right? So we have RAS here doing its thing and RAS is by, bound to GD, GDP when it's inactive. So right now it's inactive, but then we're gonna, it's going to interact with the tyrosine kinase through these bridging proteins. After it interacts with the tyrosine kinase, RAS becomes activated, and in its active state, it's going to be bound to GTP. So it goes from GDP, GDP bound to GTP bound. After this, we have the MAP cascade, uh, kin sorry, MAP kinase cascade. And which uh, leads to uh, nuclear signals, nucleus. Uh, with nuclear signals which promote cell proliferation. So, um, as you can see, when RAS is active, we get cell proliferation. Um, but we don't want that to go on uncontrolled, so there has to be a way to undo this as well. Um, so, the most logical solution would be to affect this GTP, which is basically the on-off switch for RAS, right? So, how can we, um, how can we um, turn RAS on and off? So, one second. So, we're going to have... Um, gap, uh, we're going to have gap, um, or gaps, sorry, which are, uh, GTPase, excuse me, GTPase activating proteins. So, um, a GTPase is an enzyme 
that hydrolyzes GTP. So this hydrolyzes GTP, meaning it makes GTP lose a phosphate group and go to GDP, right? So our RAS was bound to GTP. Um, if gaps act on RAS, they're going to make it turn into GDP bound RAS. Uh, which is inactive. And remember, we said when RAS is active, the, it leads to the cascade which promotes cell proliferation. But when RAS is inactive, we get uh, less cell, pro cell proliferation. So an interesting um, clinical correlation here is neurofibromin, I believe that's right, which is a gap. So we said gaps are um, GTPase activating proteins. So this is going to make RAS go from RAS GTP to RAS GDP which is inactive. And this is active. Um, there is a disease associated with, um, with neurofibromin. It's called uh, neuro uh, fibromatosis fibromatosis. So uh, this is when there's an abnormal neurofibromin, which is a gap protein, um, which doesn't allow this RAS to be switched off and so if RAS can't be switched off, then you're going to have um, uncontrolled cell proliferation, right? Because um, RAS promotes cell proliferation, can't be turn off, turned off because this isn't working, our, switch off, our off switch isn't working. So we're gonna have uncontrolled cell proliferation and that's associated with uh, malignant neoplasias. Um, so that's it for, um, for the RAS signaling pathway. I hope uh, that was helpful for you guys.